Well, good afternoon, my young friends. I'm Captain Tom Ferguson. I'm excited to be with you this afternoon in your geography class, and I've got some exciting information for you. I appreciate Ms. Curran inviting me, and I know that uh, you know how awesome a teacher she is, and if you are paying attention in her class, I promise you're going to learn a lot, and you're going to have a good time on top of it. Now, today we're going to talk about a pretty interesting subject. As an airline pilot, I fly all over the world, and you know, one of the important things is saving time, and equally important is saving fuel. The longer you go, the more time it takes, and the more fuel it takes, which is expensive, and so we always try to minimize both. So, I want you to think about the last time you looked at a world map and it showed the routes that people fly from point A to point B, maybe from, from Detroit, where you are, to New York City, or to Los Angeles. Um, maybe from, from uh, New York City to Rome or to South America, you see all these curvy lines. But there's, there's something odd about that, isn't it? You know that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. You know that. Well, that's true as long as you're talking about a flat piece of paper or a flat surface. But we know that the globe is spherical and so it's not exactly a straight line on that so how do we how do we account for that I've got a picture of what I normally fly right right here and I drew a black line between Dallas Fort Worth and Hong Kong that's the symbol for Hong Kong and you can see that it goes uh, take off west out of Texas and go through uh, New Mexico and Arizona and Southern California. You go just north of Hawaii and eventually sometime you strike landmass on the other side and hopefully it's pretty close to Hong Kong and there you are. Well, that's not really the way we go. Why? Because it's a globe. Now if you look very carefully, you can see an arc, a red arc that goes up through, through uh, pretty close to Seattle, up through Canada through Alaska, through the southern part of Russia, through Siberia, and then down through Mongolia, and eventually through China, all the way to Hong Kong. Now, does that seem right? Look at that big arc. Well, it is. Turns out that's the shortest distance, and the reason is, it's a thing called the Great Circle Loop. Okay, let me explain that. Let's look at this globe. Again, it's a three-dimensional sphere. It's three-dimensional, not two-dimensional, like a piece of paper. So, in order to get from point A to point B, we, we try to minimize the distance flown. Let me show you a, a, a way to think about it. And once you get this, you will never forget the Great Circle. Everybody's seen this, okay. I want to show you what the Great Circle route means. Excuse me a second. Oh! Wow. Well, that was close. But I made it. And what you would expect if you cut an apple right through the middle is that you would see the center of the apple. So imagine that you wanted to start on a point let's say here, and go to a point, pick one, here, the shortest distance would be right through the middle of that apple. Okay? Any direction you could go, you can see that it turns into a straight line when you look at it in a two-dimensional plane. So when we're flying the airplane, we slice the globe just like we slice this apple. And we put the origination point here, the destination point, wherever it is, and then we, we cut it right through the middle, and that gives us the shape on the map that we can follow in order to fly the shortest distance. So you can imagine, I'm going to pick this up and show you. We're going to start out in Texas. Here's Texas, right there. That's Dallas. And if you wanted to go to Hong Kong, it's a long way over. 
it's way over here so but because it's kind of on the same level we think well we can go from here just take off driving west drive through south uh, part of New Mexico Arizona California just north of Hawaii and end up there and you can or you could go the other way if you really want to right you don't want to do that either but if you I'm going to use my fingers here so you can see i am put one finger on Texas and one finger on on uh, Hong Kong and if you looked at my fingers you could just about see where it would have to go I'll turn it back in the normal way you see it if, if the straight line right there is just about through Alaska and Siberia so if you slice this big apple so it included the origination the destination and the very center of the earth in here someplace that would be the Great Circle Route. That would be the shortest, the most expeditious way to get anywhere on the globe. Just a real quick note. Back in the old days, like 1492, when Columbus sailed the ocean blue, you remember that, he took off and he could have done the same thing. He went straight across here and ended up somewhere down actually in, in the Caribbean. If he had taken the Great Circle Route, he could have ended up in New York City maybe or something there been one so that was known mathematically that was known even in his age uh, by the mathematicians but this is what we do now everybody that goes a long distance has to do the great circle route it's just shorter hope you enjoyed that little testimonial there and I hope you will get to come see me on American Airlines someday and tell all my friends hello up there in, in Detroit. We love you all. And tell Ms. Curran, thank you for inviting me. I'll look forward to seeing you all again. Take care.